Yo, 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 what is up, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. If you're watching this when I first upload it, I'm currently recovering from wisdom teeth surgery, so I've decided to give y'all a couple videos to hold you over until then. Just kind of want to put that out there in case some big news happens because it would happen when I'm recovering from surgery. That's why you won't see an immediate reaction video just to let y'all know. But today we are talking about the Philadelphia 76ers who bounced out in the second round for the second straight year this past season to the heat led by Jimmy Butler, who was formerly on the team who they picked Brett Brown over, which is kind of embarrassing. If you are the Sixers, the heat went on to lose in seven to the Boston Celtics, but they're a really good team. It, there's no shame in losing to that Heat roster. That was a really good team, especially when you consider all the turmoil with the Sixers last season. You had Joel Embiid dealing with two different injuries. You had James Harden coming to the team halfway through the year after one of the weirdest trade sagas we've ever seen with Ben Simmons. There was a lot going on with that team and in that locker room. So coming into this upcoming year, they've got kind of an off season to go ahead and gel. They have some time for Joel Embiid to get healthy. James Harden to get healthy and I'm I'm a believer in the Sixers team is basically what I'm getting at. I think the Sixers have the capability to be an elite team out there in the East and in the NBA as a whole. They didn't have the flashiest of off seasons, but I think they made some really solid additions that are going to help the roster in a lot more ways than maybe some people are thinking of. So today I want to go through and talk about why I believe in the Sixers team and why I think they can win a championship. Go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you do enjoy. Let's go ahead and get into it. Starting off with their starting lineup, which will be Tyrese Matthews. Maxi, James Harden, Tobias Harris, PJ Tucker, and Joel Embiid. PJ Tucker is the big one there that is the acquisition that they spent a lot of money on, giving him around $10 million a year for the next few years, and he's going to fit in really, really well. But the reason why they were able to get PJ Tucker was because of James Harden. Coming into this offseason, James Harden was a free agent. There was really never any fear that he was going to leave Philly. It's where he wanted to get traded to at the deadline. It was where he wanted to be. Wasn't really much of a secret. So when it went to the offseason, the question wasn't, is James Harden going to re-sign in Philly? That was kind of a given. The question was, how much money is he going to get? Because coming into this offseason, James Harden, it didn't feel like really earned a super max contract. He had a really down year this past year, dealing with what looked like a loss in some kind, kind of his first step, his athleticism. He was getting blocked a lot more, not creating as much space. It looks like the start of the decline of James Harden. So coming to this offseason, it felt like the Sixers were going to have to give him a ridiculous amount of money, despite him not really performing up to that this past season. However, James Harden instead took a huge pay cut of around $14 million to help this team get better. That opened up some financial exceptions, you know, CBA rules and all that, to allow them to bring in PJ Tucker and Daniel House, two really solid players for this team. And it showed that James Harden really does want to win, which I think is huge for this team. I think James Harden has been kind of unfairly labeled as a playoff choker over the course of his career. He's had some really great playoff series, and he's faced off against some really tough opponents, namely those KD Warriors teams twice in a row, which is just absolutely unfair for those teams. But he's really had some great series in the past, and I believe that James Harden is in for a bounce back year. I think that his team first mentality that he showed wanting to win a championship by giving up a bunch of money is noble in its own regard, but I also think that it shows that Harden is betting on himself. I think it shows that Harden believes he can have a really good season. Harden could have went into the soft season and said, okay, I see myself declining. I'm going to go out, say, hey, Daryl Morey, we're friends. Give me this huge bag. I'll go in, you know, do my best. We'll try to compete, whatever, but I'm going to secure this last big, big paycheck. Instead, he said, okay, I will take a discount this year and a player option next year so that hopefully I bounce back this year and next year I can make a ton of money. There's a real chance that if James Harden continues to regress these next two seasons, he's going to get a contract like half of the size of the one he just got next time he's a free agent, which is really scary, I'm sure, for a guy in Harden who could have taken a ridiculous amount of money. But to me, it shows that he's betting on himself. It shows that he believes he could get back to maybe not the form he showed in Houston, but maybe the form of himself in Brooklyn like a year ago, where he looked like a legit MVP candidate. While Kyrie and Kevin Durant got hurt, James Harden stepped up and carried that Brooklyn Nets team for a lot of that season. It was really impressive. And I think a lot of people forget that was just over a year ago. That was like a year and a half 
half ago at this point. So James Harden really is capable of still being a, a phenomenal player. I firmly believe that. So I think Harden's going to be better, and I think that will be huge for this team. Of course, they've got Joel Embiid, who is an MVP caliber player, has come in second these past two years. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes ahead and takes it this year, and I think he's really going to benefit from the lineup that I talked about a second ago. Maxi, Harden, Tucker, Harris, and him is a great lineup for Joel Embiid. You've got a really great playmaker in James Harden who can space the floor, unlike Ben Simmons in the past where, you know, he couldn't really shoot even if he was a great playmaker. James Harden allows them to kind of run in transition. We saw a lot of flashes of that in the games that they played over the course of the second half of this past season. Uh, he, he and James Harden are a great fit together, Embiid. But also, I think that adding P.J. Tucker to that lineup is huge for this team because last season they had Matisse Thibel start 50 games and Thibel is a ph phenomenal defensive player. He cannot shoot at all. He was basically a nothing. In fact, he was a negative on the offensive end. Teams were just leaving him open. You could double off of Matisse Thibel and he would really never make you pay. Maybe there's a timeline in the future where he ends up developing his shooting and becomes a better fit. But now, they instead of having Matisse Thibel in that starting lineup, have PJ Tucker, who is one of the best corner shooters we've ever seen. All he has to do is catch and shoot threes in that corner. And he's going to get a lot of great looks because teams are going to have to double off of him in the corner to guard Embiid. And if they do, it, he's going to make them pay. So maybe they'll stay on him in the corner. But with Embiid, you can't usually one-on-one -on -one him because he's just going to burn you almost every single time. You've also got James Harden who can attack the paint and give PJ Tucker a lot of great looks in that corner because they're going to have to help from the corner because, you know, you can't help off of Joel Embiid. So I think it's going to be a really great three-person triangle, triad, that's the word. They're going to be great together as a group of three. Then you also have Tyrese Maxey, who I, I've talked about this in a video before, pairs really well with James Harden in that backcourt. He's more of kind of a fast paced run and transition guy. Well, James Harden is more slow, methodical. He'll hit you with step backs. Uh, Tyrese Maxey will attack the paint, hit floaters. He is a huge threat to attack the paint as well, developing those playmaking skills, being able to kick out to guys like Embiid, Tucker, James Harden. I think that he fits great on this team. And he's also poised for a breakout. He shot around 40% from three, had a career high in shooting. If he wasn't a second year player, he might've been most improved player and who knows maybe he could try and fight for that award this year but I think Tyrese Maxey his ceiling is ridiculous I am a huge believer in him then you've got Tobias Harris who struggled at the three last time he played it but now I think playing the three alongside PJ Tucker is going to go a lot better than it did with Al Horford the big problem was that when he played the three without Horford in town, the spacing was terrible because you also had Ben Simmons on the court. Now you have Tyrese Maxey, James Harden, PJ Tucker, Joel Embiid, all really good three-point shooters next to Tobias Harris, so I think he's going to be really solid at the three, and he had a solid season last year. Despite that horrible start that he had, he had a pretty good year at the end of the season, in the playoffs when Joel Embiid missed some time, in that fir those first couple games of the Heat series, he really held his own, and against the Raptors, I thought he played great defense on Pascal Siakam when he was matched up against him. I think Tobias Harris is a really solid player and has become kind of underrated due to his contract. He's not a max contract player, but he is a like borderline all-star caliber player in my eyes. I think he is really, really good. Then you've got a guy off the bench in D'Anthony Melton, who I think is a perfect pickup for this team. They've really been lacking consistent guard play off the bench, and that's exactly what D'Anthony Melton provides. He's a two-way guy. He's going to play defense. He can play make. He can shoot. He can do a bit of everything, and he really gives them a guy that they've been missing off of the bench. Alongside him off the bench, you have Shake Milton, who is a pretty good scorer. Um, he does need to kind of work on some consistency, but maybe with more talent around him, it can come along. He still is young as well. You've got Dan Wallhouse, who last time he was with Harden, played really, really well. A decent 3 and D guy. You've got George Niang, who shot over 40% from three for the Sixers this past year. A really solid guy there. And then at the five, you have Charles Bassey or Paul Reed. Two young guys you can go either way. Both have shown some flashes here and there, but I would like to say I do think that is their biggest weakness is the lack of a backup five. For me, I think a great name they could go out and pick up is a guy like Hassan Whiteside. Sure, he's not really that a guy that can stretch the floor, but Andre Drummond played really well for them this past season in kind of a similar role where you have Joel Embiid. You don't need that many minutes out of a backup center. Embiid can go out and give you like 35, 34 minutes a game. You just need the backup center to come in for those last like 14 or so. 
So you go out and get, get a guy like Hassan Whiteside, who is a lot better for the Jazz than I think some people realize. He played really, really good minutes. Sure, he is still prone to some of those defensive lapses and, you know, mistakes here and there. But like I said, you only need him to play like 14, 15 minutes. So I think going out and getting a guy like him would be really helpful for this team. You also have some specialists. You have Cork Maz, who is a three point specialist that you can bring in in certain situations. Say you need a three to tie the game. You've got a guy that can do that. Or if you need some defense, you've got Matisse Thibel, who, like I said, cannot shoot. But if you're at the end of game situation where you have to get a stop, bringing in a guy like Matisse Thibel, or if you just have a guy who is absolutely going off, being able to bring in a guy like Matisse Thibel to try and lock up and play that good defense is huge for this Sixers team. To have a guy that can come in and make those, you know, huge defensive stops when you do need them is huge. It really is important in today's NBA. He's shut down guys like Steph Curry in the past. Matisse Thibel, despite despite the offensive woes, is still an all NBA caliber defender. Now, with all that being said, I do still think, like I said, I think they need to pick up a backup big. I could see them maybe picking up another guard off the bench. Shake Milton is a bit here and there. They do have Isaiah Joe, who impressed me in the summer league, as well as Trevel and Queen, who was G League MVP this past year, who is also impressive. But I still would like to see them go and pick up maybe another guard and a big like a Hassan Whiteside or maybe even a Dwight Howard just to come in and play some minutes here and there and give you a veteran option. But with all that being said, I think it's a really good team. They've got spacing around Joel Embiid. I think Harden is poised for a bounce back year. I think Tyrese Maxey's poised for a breakout year. PJ Tucker and Tobias Harris round out that starting five in what is, in my opinion, one of the best starting fives in the league. At worst, like a top five starting five. I would argue probably top three. A pretty solid bench with DeAnthony Melton, Dan Wilhouse, George Niang. Uh, Matisse Thibel could come off of it as well. Shake Milton. They've got some decent depth. I do think they need a couple acquisitions here and there, but overall, I really like the Sixers team. I think they're going to do big things, and I wouldn't be surprised if they won the Eastern Conference. Those are my thoughts on the Philadelphia 76ers. Let me know in the comment section below where you think they finish in the East, and do you think they are a contender, or do you think they're just below teams like Boston, uh, Milwaukee, Miami, teams like that? I appreciate y'all watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy. I'll see y'all later. Real one, say it back.